Hello guys, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this series of lectures, we are talking about protein trafficking mechanisms and different aspects of protein trafficking. In this particular lecture, we are going to talk about the protein translocation inside the nucleus. Means basically, once the protein is synthesized in the cytosol, which is destined to be delivered inside nucleus, what is the journey, how the protein gets delivered inside the nucleus, we'll understand with this particular lecture. So the very first thing that I should say in the translocation into nucleus, this particular topic, the proteins are synthesized in cytosol. You should remember that the protein synthesized in the cytosol, then it will be delivered directly to the nucleus. So it will take this pathway. We know that uh, when the proteins destined to different organelles, they synthesized in the cytosol and directly delivered to that particular organelle. And there are some other proteins known as secretory proteins. Those are synthesized in the cytosol, but they are inserted after the synthesis inside the ER lumen. Then they package inside the ER lumen, then transferred from ER to Golgi, then to the cell membrane. But in this case, a protein need to be transferred to the nucleus that should carry a nuclear localization signal or NLS. Without the presence of nuclear localization signal, which contains specific amino acid sequences that acts as an address for the protein to be delivered inside the nucleus right so <clears throat> here i will be stating you some step by step process of the journey of a protein from cytosol to the nucleus first in this slide then we'll move to two important slides one discussing the role of an important protein that involves in the process of nuclear transport of proteins known as RAN protein. We'll talk about that and then we'll also discuss about uh, how exactly RAN as well as the protein importers and exporters work in nucleus. So I'll be sharing you uh, this next slide and in this particular steps, steps of protein translocation inside the nucleus. Start with the protein synthesis, the very first step where the protein is synthesized where? In the cytosol. After the synthesis, obviously the protein must carry nuclear localization signal or NLS. With proper NLS, it will be targeted to the nucleus. Then comes the important point, import protein. So basically to import a protein, there is importing or what we call it, importing or import receptor that are present. This receptor can bind to the cargo. Let's imagine that this is the cargo. Cargo means what? Cargo means the delivery protein. Simply for the delivery, we have packages. We call them cargo. So cargo protein means the package protein that need to be delivered. And this, this importing receptors, they also have, they also carry a site where it can bind with RAN. RAN protein. RAN protein is one of the most important protein for nuclear localization of proteins. Where the RAN can have, RAN protein can have GTP associated with it or GDP associated with it. Right? If it is associated with GTP, it is active form, associated with GDP, inactive form. We'll talk about the role and importance of RAN in nuclear transport later. But once it has this importing, the importing binds to the nuclear pore complex. If you remember the nucleus, uh, the nuclear membrane, let me draw, this is how the nuclear membrane looks like. And in the nuclear membrane, basically if I draw it in a circle like this, there are channels or pores known as nuclear pore complex. This nuclear pore complex is very important because nuclear pore complex interacts to this importing protein. And then the translocation of the protein inside the nucleus begins. Right after the importing binds to the nuclear pore complex, then the initiation of protein translocation from cytosol to the nucleus started. After the protein is translocated inside the nucleus, then the GTP gets hydrolyzed and release the cargo. The GTP gets hydrolyzed, again RAN GTP, so that GTP is hydrolyzed into GTP, and GDP is no longer functional. And the cargo, the protein is released inside the nucleus. So after the protein translocation is done, GTP hydrolysis takes place to release the cargo. Then comes the role of export receptor. We have talked about the import inside nucleus with nuclear import or importing protein. 
Similarly, we have export receptors as well, export signals. So again, if a protein that is produced inside the nucleus need to go out of the nucleus, it must carry nuclear export signal. If a protein need to go inside the nucleus, it should carry nuclear import signal or nuclear localization signal. Okay. So here, once a protein produced as a nuclear export signal, then it will bind to exporting or a protein which will export the protein outside the nucleus. So it is known as exporting. Okay, what is the job of exporting? The exporting will bind to the protein need to be transferred outside the nucleus. Then the translocation through the nuclear pore complex will be done and then after the protein is translocated outside of the nucleus into the cytosol, again GTP hydrolysis will be done which will mark the release of the cargo. So every single time once the protein is delivered either inside the nucleus or outside of the nucleus in the cytosol, then only the hydrolysis of GTP is done. And for the import of the protein inside the nucleus, we need nuclear localization signal. For exporting a protein out of the nucleus, we need nuclear export signal. Okay, so these are the basics and overview of the process of nuclear protein translocation. You can take a screenshot here. I'll move to the next slide. And here I'll be taking a different color to explain the role of RAN protein. Role of RAN protein basically, okay. So to understand RAN protein's function, I'll draw, let's say this is the nuclear pore that I draw. These are the nuclear membrane, this is the nuclear pore. And in very simple terms, first we'll understand how RAN proteins work. Then we'll understand how importing and exporting are connected to RAN. You need to understand the overall picture in order to get the point of understanding the nuclear transport of proteins. So these are the membranes and this is the nuclear pore and in the nuclear pore, through the nuclear pore, our proteins will move. So some proteins will migrate inside the nucleus, some proteins will migrate out of the nucleus. So here, a RAN, remember one thing, do not forget this thing, that inside the nucleus, it's still, it, it's not very easy to go inside the nucleus or out of the nucleus because nuclear pore complex itself is constructed with multiple structures. It has uh, protein components and making a bucket-like structure so that it can filter in different protein molecules. But still, if a protein carries nuclear localization signal, it can be imported. If it carries nuclear export signal, it can be exported. This is the thing that you need to put in your mind. Apart from that, what else you need to know is that how exactly the RAN protein works. Remember the RAN has two different forms. We have a RAN GTP form and we have RAN GDP form. There are these two different forms, RAN GTP and GDP, right? So GTP form is a form that is needed to go out of the nucleus. Always remember that. So the identity card needed to go out of the nucleus. It's still easy to get inside the nucleus, but it's very difficult to get out of the nucleus. Only specific proteins are brought out of the nucleus. So, only if you have RAN GTP, then only you'll be able and capable to go outside of the nucleus. If you know this, you're almost halfway there. So now the RAN GTP will come outside of the nucleus. Now this RAN GTP is hydrolyzed with GDP. So GDP is formed. So now it will be RAN GDP. Here is the exchange. So basically, it's not the exchange, actually GTP hydrolysis. So RAN GDP is a form which cannot go out of the nucleus. It can go inside of the nucleus, but cannot go outside. RAN GTP can only go outside. So RAN GDP, again, can go inside of the nucleus. Okay. And this RAN GDP will be converted to RAN GTP again with fresh copy of GTP added and existing copy of GDP kicked out. This is a very simple cycle. If you see, it's a very simple cycle. There is no nothing complicated, right? Only RAN GTP can go out of the nucleus. Now, I'll involve I'll, I'll also add name of two more enzymes for this function. 
For example, when when GTP comes outside of the nucleus, GTP gets hydrolyzed to GDP. So it is known as a protein. GTP is activating protein. It's also known as RAN gap. GTP is activating protein working here. And then once RAN GTP comes inside the nucleus, GTP is substituted with GTP. It is done by guanine nucleotide exchange factor or RAN gap. Known as RAN gap, guanine nucleotide exchange factor. So RAN gap acts inside the nucleus to substitute the GDP with a fresh copy of GTP, and the gap RAN gap protein, GTP is activator protein, works outside of the nucleus in the cytosol that helps in the utilization of GTP and break it down into GDP. So this is a simple cycle that continues between RAN GTP and RAN GDP, utilizing RAN GIF and RAN GAP. That's it. So now you can pause here and can take a screenshot when I explain this process of RAN GTP and RAN GDP and how they work. Now I'll move to the third and last slide of this particular lecture, and this one is all about the role of RAN protein along with that the actual process of this. So the actual process. So see, in the middle, in the center, what we have, RAN GTP. RAN GTP goes outside, become RAN GDP, brings inside, again becomes RAN GTP. This is the place where RAN GEF, guanine nucleotide exchange factor, works. And in the outside, what works? GTP is activating protein works. So this part, this cycle of RAN protein is clear to us, and you have already talked about the role of importing and exporting. Importing is a molecule brings protein inside the nucleus. Exporting is a molecule brings protein outside of the nucleus. So now we have this importing. An important protein is constructed with two different units, alpha and beta units. You can see that clearly here. And we also have exporting. This is exporting CRM. Is one example of exporting, and whenever we have importing, let me write I exporting. Apart from that, we need their respective protein to be transferred. So this is the cargo protein with NLS means nuclear localization signal, and this is a protein to be exported with nuclear export signal. See how easy it is. You don't need to mug up. You don't need to just put your brains to remember everything. It's so simple if you understand the concept. Now look at the beauty. This protein with nuclear localization signal will be intact in in contact with the importing, and then this whole complex will move through the nuclear pore complex. This is the nuclear pore complex. Both of them are nuclear pore complexes. And there are multiple nuclear pore complex inside the nucleus. So once they will bring both of these structures into the nucleus, then what happens? GTPs. So hydrolysis of GTP, and that causes. The release of both the cargo protein from the importing. Done. After that, what happens? Again, nuclear export signal containing protein is present inside the nucleus. It will bind to the exporting. Let's say CRM one one example of exporting. So it binds there. Then it will bring the protein outside of the nucleus. Outside of the nucleus, again, GTP hydrolysis will be done. Protein will be separated from the CRM one. Or the exporting, but in this process, RAN GTP and RAN GDP plays a crucial role. For example, the CRM1 and protein complex cannot go outside of the nucleus without RAN GTP. Remember, I told you RAN GTP is the identity card that you need to show in order to go out of the nucleus. So, without RAN GTP, you cannot go outside of the nucleus. So, I'll take a different color. I'll take uh, black one here. So RAN GDP, RAN GTP is very important to go outside of the nucleus. So the cargo protein with CRM1 is good to go outside of the nucleus, but they need to be in contact with RAN GTP. Okay. So once they associate with RAN GTP, they only, be, then only they can get back into the cytosol, transported to the cytosol. Export process is complete. And on the other hand, what happens after this delivery, after the transfer, and GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP again. That will be done. 
in the cytosol and again here the protein released so once the protein that need to be transferred inside the nucleus must have nuclear localization signal and they are transferred inside the nucleus by the presence of ran gdp so ran gdp helps them to bring inside the nucleus ran gdp helps them to go outside of the nucleus that's how easy it is and that's the cyclical process that continues although in many cases the protein itself with nls nuclear localization signal is enough to be transported inside the nucleus without ran gdp but without ran gtp you cannot bring any protein outside of the nucleus so that's the crucial thing remember ran gtp is a crucial event without this this is the id card without this you cannot go outside of the nucleus you need ran gtp to go outside of the nucleus okay so that concludes our understanding of nuclear transport of proteins or protein translocation inside nucleus i believe you understood this process clearly right if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye